Welcome everyone in today's discussion with um, our two co-chairs for the ASA Biopharmaceutical Section Regulatory Industry Statistics Workshop, which is happening in September in this year. Uh, we have with us Eric Bloomquist from FDA and Fanny Natanegra from um, Eli Lilly. So, and I'm Hia Banerjee. I'm the Publication Officer of ASA Biopharmaceutical Section. So, you know, Eric, I would like to know from you a little bit about like, you know, this whole RISW 2023, you know, what is the new over here? What are the changes in this workshop this year? Can you please let us know a little bit? Sure, thanks here for the introduction. Um, yeah, I think uh, RISW 2023 is sort of our second uh, workshop kind of coming out of the pandemic. And it, I think it really builds off a lot of the successes from RISWA 2022. Um, to start off with with a little history, um, for for many years this this workshop was held down in Wardman Park, Marriott, and, and I think the location was was very nice. It was down there by the Smithsonian Zoo. I think a lot of people like to visit, but the hotel itself was you know a little bit small. It was always sort of their space was an issue. I think the ambiance was sometimes a little bit mixed, and I guess what what we had realized was from attending RISWA 2022 is now space is not really an issue. You know, I think there is a lot more space also on the first floor that really wasn't widely used. And I, I think it has much better sort of um, networking kind of opportunities. So really one of, one of the main things that we wanted to do, do for 2023 was utilize the space a little bit more efficiently, you know, try to utilize the space um, that, that's available. So one of the things that we had done this year is the number of parallel sessions has increased from 42 to 49. So there'll be an additional slot per time band, which is very helpful because the number of parallel sessions that we received uh, was, was over 100. So we were able to accommodate more sessions there. The poster sessions this time will sort of be broken up more on the second floor to, I think, add more visibility for those as well. Um, and, and then the other big change, I think, to really help sort of with the, with the networking aspect is we have added roundtables on Thursday and Friday this year. So the workshop will be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And before, the, the roundtables tra had traditionally been on, on Thursday with lunch provided, and then Friday was really on your own. This year, lunch will be available both Thursday and Friday with roundtables both days. Or, or sort of just a box lunch. And what we're really hoping to achieve with that is sort of increased networking time with sort of people who attend the workshop. I think that's one of the things that most people really enjoy seeing old colleagues, um, meeting new friends to really to kind of catch up. And if we're able to provide that lunch, I think that time can be used a little bit more, um, used better. So those are a little bits of the changes that we've been doing. Um, you know, I, I think we're all looking forward to the workshop. So far, attendance has been doing very well. We're almost at a thousand registrants um, with about a month to go to the workshop. And I think it's possible that it may sort of sell out. Um, and uh, I, I think it's just gonna be an another fantastic uh, time that I think everyone's really looking forward to. Yeah, it seems to be very exciting. Uh, so Fanny, if you can talk a little bit about the plenary sessions and, you know, like who are our plenary speakers, um, that will be great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Hia, for the introduction and also for the invitation uh, for us to tell a little bit more about the workshop. Um, Eric and I have had the really great opportunity here to put together some really cool sessions. Um, and so I'll start with the theme, you know, for our workshop this year, and that is statistical thinking and innovation with global impact. So our two plenary sessions are really highlighting this theme, right? There are a couple of important topics that we're going to highlight in these back-to-back um, -back plenary sessions, and it's going to be held on September 28th, so the second day of the workshop itself. So on the morning of the second day of the workshop, we're going to offer these uh, two back-to-back -back plenary sessions, and we're going to bring in 
um, speakers and panel members um, with representation from academic industry and regulatory. Um, so the first session is going to be um, titled Statistical Influence and Opportunities on the International Harmonization of Drug Development. So again, we're tying in that workshop theme and in that session, we're going to feature Frank Bretz from Novartis and John Scott from FDA as our keynote speakers. Um, we will have Amy Shah, who's going to moderate the session. Um, and we'll have panel members um, such as Lisa Lavange and two of um, regulatory uh, uh, panel members from Japan, Yuki Ando, and also from EMA, Frank Patavi. So it's really exciting, um, you know, session where we're going to hear from regulatory representative around the globe to get their opinions on how, you know, we can um, influence as a statistician on the harmonization of a drug development. So very exciting session. Um, so that's the first one. Uh, the second session is titled Digital Innovation and Artificial Intelligence, Outlook and Trends. And so in this, um, for this second session, we're gonna focus on the digital health. Um, as you know, you know, coming out of the pandemic, a lot of digitization is, is happening here. Decentralized clinical trial has been a hot topic. And so we're in that session, we're gonna feature Jennifer Goldsack from the Digital Medicine Society, as well as Matthew Diamond from FDA as keynote speakers. Um, Kelly Zhao is going to be moderating the session. And again, we're going to invite Yuki Ando and um, Frank Tipitavi from PMDA and EMA to um, chime in into the discussion, you know, about how digital health is going to, um, uh, how it's being carried out around the world. Um, in addition, we will have Sandip Menon um, and Vinay Pai, uh, who will be joining our discussion as well. So we can, um, the, the, the folks, the participants can provide their thoughts on global challenges on opportunities for digital health through patient-centric approach. So two very exciting um, panel uh, plenary sessions, and we're very excited to, to have those speakers. Yeah, it's super exciting and especially, you know, like we are going to have regulatory people from around the world. That is very exciting. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, it took a long time for you guys to plan. So how it is like to plan a large conference like this and also like, you know, how the other people or other members can get involved, you know, to make it a successful workshop. Yeah, yeah that's a great question here. Yeah, th thanks for that. Um, yeah, it does take a long time. Um, actually, Fani and I have been working together since about January 2022, so almost 18 months on, on planning for, for a workshop. So it does start extremely early, um, which, which is helpful. You know, it is it is a large workshop. I have, um, and it does take time. I, I guess the, the two things to, to keep in mind is you have a large steering committee um, that it really, we, we have to really thank for, for all their efforts um, this past sort of year, especially. Uh, right now our student committee is about 40, 45 individuals and the ability to pass along or to sort of uh, divvy up the tasks, I, I think is what really makes, makes it possible. Um, you know, with the number of things that you know, really we're, we're statisticians, kind of our, our day jobs. And if, if you had to, you know, select sessions or to hunt down chairs for this or, you know, organize, let's say the logistics where to put sessions, it could be a little overwhelming. And so I think one of the things to keep in mind when planning a large workshop like this is the, the ability to have a steering committee that is just as motivated and driven to put on workshop as the chairs are I think is, is really important and I guess that that brings up one other point is how would you get involved sort of with uh, a steering committee um, like that I, I know for myself I had attended this workshop for many many years I think for most FDA uh, statisticians this is kind of the highlight of our year actually I think most because it is local um, but it's so concentrated in terms of like the sessions and sort of the people who attend. 
Um, it's it's really one of our highlights, and I had attended for for many many years, and um, I never thought about the steering sort of committee. Um, I was the uh, FDA Statistical Association president last year, and so we sort of become the co-chair uh, for the workshop. But prior to that, um, Hope and Kiki had had reached out to me and invited me to be the um, parallel session co-chair. And you and you learn a lot just kind of by doing, just by sort of naturally. And and what my my suggestion to be anybody who's who's in in that boat, say you've attended this workshop six or seven times. Is to simply reach out to the co-chairs. You know, I, I know. You know, simply reach out via email or LinkedIn or, or some other word of mouth, and say, "Hey, I, I love this workshop. I, I, I want to get involved." And I know for the individuals that did that this year, you know, even just sort of like a cold call email, I said, "Great. You know, I, I need people like you who who want to do this." And we we found roles for for I think everyone, um, whether it's on promotion or just logistics. Everyone has really found a spot, and so I would just suggest just get going, you know, just make that initial call out. And I think that's going to be the best way to get involved. And, and it's like I said, without the assistance of the steering committee, we, we couldn't have done it. No way. Fanny, do you want to add something? Yeah, no, I, I think Eric summarized it beautifully. It's um, it's about just making that initial step, you know, raise your hand uh, if you really, you know, love <clears throat> this this workshop and, um, and and enjoy and learn a lot. I, you can contribute too, um, and uh, you can do that by simply contacting uh, one of us or one of the steering committee and say, hey, I want to help next time. You know, how can I do that? Um, and and we've gotten a lot of volunteers, you know, over the last year that we've as we're planning towards this 2023 workshop. And yeah, as Eric mentioned, we've made spots and you know assign, um, create tasks uh, for folks that that want to uh, join in. So yeah, please raise your hand, and um, people will be happy to uh, find something for you. And, and yeah, there's, yeah, and there's just one other thing that so I've you know we. I meet a lot of students or sort of individuals who are who are not in biop, and I guess I, I mentioned that I say, "Are you coming to to the workshop?" Kind of like everyone mm -hmm. knows what it is, and I think outside of biop, unfortunately, it's still not widely known. You know, I, I meet people say, "What are you talking about?" I, I don't know, and you'll have to mention to them that this, if you're interested in this area, this is really going to be the workshop to to attend. And so I think something small that everybody could do. Is if you if you enjoy this workshop, if this is kind of on your must do list every year, is to simply spread it via word of mouth. Because many people, um, you know, students who are interested in biop, they're they're familiar with the big statistical conferences, JSM, ENAR, those type of things, because they they have a more of an academic, let's say, I, I think concentration. But a lot of people just simply don't know about this workshop. And simply, if you can just spread it via word of mouth, say this is really going to be your best chance to network and hear about problems here, and to 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 spread it via word of mouth. That's also a way to kind of get involved. It's just to spread your sort of enthusiasm for itself. And I found that when I've mentioned it to people, they say, "Wow, I wish I would have known about it um, when I was in school." And that that was my feeling too. I wish when I was in school, I had known about it, um, and I probably would have attended. So. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Eric. Uh, at school, I also did not have any idea about this workshop, and uh, and also like what both of you have just mentioned that you know just raise your hand, just ask someone you know for some some helping opportunity, and that's how I came to ASA Bio as well. So I would like to ask you that like you know how did you guys got involved with ASA Bio? Is it the same story, or you know like you did something different? Yeah, um, I mean, to me, the biop section is uh, a natural section, you know, based on my um, uh, my role in the, um, you know, and and my my work in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so that's that's a section that I always sign up for year after year, right? When I renew my ASA membership. Um, but involvement with this particular workshop. Um, I raise my hand and say, hey, I want to get involved. How, how can I get involved? And so that's how I really got uh, involved, you know, uh, uh, a year and a half ago um, and really glad to be partnering with Eric um, to co-chair this uh, this workshop this year. 
I, I guess I have a sort of a, a similar story. So I had followed the the section for, for many years, and um, I, 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 you know, going in through the through the workshop, I did enjoy part of the uh, interdisciplinary, you know, regulatory um, industry sort of interactions. And um, last year, I, I had re I was approached, and I ended up uh, saying, okay, sure, I. I enjoy this section. I enjoy the workshop, and I I went up for election, and you know, luckily I was able to. Um, people had voted for me for for sort of chair elect, so kind of just you know just small steps. Like you know, you you can start off as just sort of on the steering committee for a few years if you enjoy it. Uh, perhaps you can you can move up to let's say one of the section positions like you have here, or you know, give it a shot. You know, if you really really enjoy it and it's something you enjoy. Put your name out, nominate yourself for for an elected position. I think there's plenty of opportunities for everybody, and uh, you never know. I think where where it will lead. So it's just kind of like that initial step. I think is the biggest thing to to get going. So yeah, I totally agree to both of you. And I I I want to add with it that never shy away. You know, there are plenty of opportunities. So just raise your hand, and there will be something for you, like for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think just you know continually encourage people to to join the section and and the, let's say this this part of the statistical community. There's too many problems that I think really need to be solved at this time. Um, we need smart people. I mean, I think it's just continually growing, and I think continually to to encourage to to market yourself to say, hey, you know, we want people to join. We I think the community is very vibrant and welcoming. And to continue just to kind of grow that push, because I think there's a need for statisticians in, let's say, medical device, medicine development. Um, like Fani said, the the impact that we had, you know, like globally during the pandemic with some of the COVID trials or platform trials or just re regardless, um, we need people to develop those type of initiatives. And it's just to make that push, um, welcome people in and, and say, get involved. So. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And I hope like, you know, with uh, this, um, our conversation, you know, we can reach out to a lot of more people and like, you know, people will be more interested to join ASA bio section. And all I can say it's extremely rewarding, like not only in your professional career, but also like, you know, personally, you will feel great that, you know, you have some contribution to the society and that will change the society for good. So saying that, you know, I would like to thank both of you and we are really looking forward to the RISW 2023 workshop. And I would like to request all the people who are listening to this video today, you know, please join, please register RISW as soon as you can. And, you know, like we are going to have a great um, workshop over there in DC. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hia. Have a nice day. Bye.